and yet another video on a Xantrex C35 charge controller. I, I want to do this as a short and sweet video. We're going to try and keep it under five minutes. Explaining connections and hookups. If you ignore all other videos, watch this synopsis video. The owner's manual is pretty thick. Okay, there's a lot of stuff here. There's no way I can do it all in a, in a three to five minute video. But that tends to be the attention span of the YouTube watchers. So, again, what we're going to look at here is that even though this is very, very basic and simple on the outside, i got to consider installation on one of these to be a little bit on the advanced side. The reason for it is there's a lot of little settings and dip switches, or there's no dip switches, but jumpers you have to swap around in here in order to get this thing to where you want it. When these come out of the box from the factory, they're pretty well set up as a charge controller for 12 volt systems. If you want to do anything other than that, and it does other things, you have to move the little jumpers around that are in here. When you're getting into that, if you could get a hold of some of those hard plastic needle nose pliers, that's a good way to work with these things. It's delicate, it's tricky, you don't want to damage anything. When you're working on these things, be very gentle with it because if you and get aggressive with the screwdriver you can pop the soldering uh, it seems to work okay but it, you get you this one got a little loose I think it tightened back up but uh, you don't want to pop the soldering on that these little things again if you got big fat fingers you're gonna have trouble these are little dials that are used for setting some things on the uh, the 12 volt side um, it, and it's still not incredibly clear to me what this stuff does it really isn't um, so I am uh, still working on that stuff and basically on this I've color-coded red is positive black is negative your two um, battery cables and load because again there's no separate connections for loads so the batteries and load both go on these and there's enough room in there to get a couple extra cables in so um, I put the load positive over to this little load center but the uh, the battery side are these two right here the uh, inside basically from the panels or the uh, uh, wind stuff is going to be on this side and then you can code which way you want to go on the knockouts and the knockouts are three quarter inch you want to be really, really careful with those. Uh, it isn't like dealing with a conventional electric box, even though it looks a hell of a lot like it. If you're aggressive with a tool or pliers or something in that, you can get into this stuff. And when you're dealing with normal electrical boxes, you just don't have electronic circuit boards open in the box next to a knockout. So that's one of the things you got to be really careful of. The other thing is mounting. There's a couple of screws where, similar to this little setup on the Ryobi, um, uh, this is a charger for their uh, batteries, uh, for their power tools, the uh, 18 volt power tools. You'll notice on here it tells you what the measurement is between the two. So if you're to put a four and an eighth inch um, space between a couple of uh, uh, screws here, and then you put a pop it on there and it goes on there. Well, that's if you get four and eighth perfectly, perfectly perpendicular up and down and all that stuff. You'd be able to set this up here and kind of uh, uh, get it on there and go. Well, good luck with that, okay? It's, it's one of the most pain in the ass ways to make a mounting system of any type. I hate it when paintings come that way. I hate it when anything you put goes on a wall comes with this. It, this just sucks, okay? So that's what they put at the upper end. The, the thing is, if it sticks out too far, you're bumping into your circuit board. I'm not even gonna try to risk that. Fortunately, there's some holes underneath here that you can run some screws through, but here's what happens. When you got things going, your cables are in a way, so you can't even run through screws all that. If you try to put some L-bracket stuff in here, you run a risk of a screw or a bolt bumping into your circuit board. So you got to be really careful and don't think it's too unusual or wrong to maybe use zip ties to hold this in place. Uh, it, don't worry about that. Uh, it's not a bad thing uh, to use zip ties to hold in place. 
to use some cable brackets to hold these and then that's what gives you you know like like some cable keepers to hold this up on something give you a little integrity on that uh, not a bad thing the other thing of course when you're mounting this you want to have some air space around it and you want to be able to reach the reset button because just in case the little circuits in there start to freak out uh, with a lot of this type of equipment, you, you reset it and that does solve a lot of problems. One of the things I've done with other circuit breakers when a circuit froze up or something, I disconnect the power, I have to undo wires to do that. With this one, we can just hit a circuit button. The only indicator that you get here, which is uh, going to tell you what's going on, unless you've bought the optional faceplate with a readout that will plug in right here on the Ethernet style plug, this is uh, for a temperature thing where if you had batteries and you're worried about the batteries getting warm, this, this can do some things to regulate that. The only other indicator you have is this blinking light. Basically, if you have it in charge controller mode, which is the default mode that it comes with from the factory, if it's green blinking, it's working. If it's green solid, it's working, but the batteries are full. That's, that's all you get to know. Uh, apart from that, you've got to either get their faceplate or have a multimeter nearby, which I've Velcroed on here, to, uh, to be able to diagnose it. The other thing I did was I left enough of my 12 volt uh, DC connecting stuff here exposed that I can get the probes of my multimeter to some of the exposed stuff to get some points without having to remove the faceplate. Uh, I really don't want to be probing in here with a multimeter and then accidentally touch something that shouldn't be touched. So I want to really do all of my multimeter probing on the outside. And I do that with like this ground thing goes here. I can do my multimeter probing here. The positive goes here, but I've got a plug here that's been incorporated into it. So I can do the positive here on the battery side and get an accurate reading. On the panel side, I have the panel negative coming in from the outside right here, the panel positive coming in. I can take a reading at this fuse block without popping a cover off, without taking readings from here. Although it's nice to upgrade to the $100 faceplate, there's other things I'm doing with the money on that. We've gone a little over time on this, but this is the controls on the Schneider Electric C35, also the Xantrex C35 charge controller.